No, I listen to it all the time. I tell all my friends to smack it raw. Following podcast contains mature content. The views and opinions expressed by the host are not necessarily those of the host. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to the number one wrestling podcast on porn of the Smack and Raw podcast, where Let Me In isn't just the title of a stuck porn. I am your host, the patron saint of podcasting, the warden Matt Ritter, and I am here with my co hosts this evening. She is now the Sultan of Step on Me, the Shaman of Sheleet, the host of the Sheleet Showcase Inside the Mind of In the Crowd uh what a cater tot um <laughs> all of these cicadi. other solo cicadi when she goes by herself <laughs> I love that. miss katie kinsey bay bay the hardest working woman in podcasting today it's true what up what up what up and my co-host my friend the sultan of spitter swallow Dan delgado vince what's going on that is home man ready to talk wrestling and as usual, ladies and gentlemen, we did not come alone, making her return for the third time on the Smack It Raw podcast, one half of those wrestling girls, our queen, Queen PR. Hi. Oh, my God. I didn't realize it's been three times. This is number three, because we had you and Krista, because you surprised me with Krista the first time. I and did. then it was you, me, and Katie for an episode, and now it's the four of us. Oh, I love this. Oh, it's all here. Yes. I love it. Thanks for having me. Long uh JJ, I like all flavors. Chocolate is just one of them. Hey, so, I love JJ. When I said I when I said I was watching Dynamite for the baddies, yes, I was there for the chocolate, but chocolate is just one of the many flavors I enjoy. Um and what up to Brian H. Waters? Oh, he's amazing. Um, all right. Let's get into news and rumors because I don't have a lot. So uh, first and foremost, Edge is cast as Ares in the Disney Plus series of Percy Jackson and the Olympians. So that'll be really cool to see Edge uh, getting back into his acting roles. And I really enjoyed the first Percy Jackson movie. So Mm -hmm. curious to see Mm -hmm. what they do here. I'm excited. Me too. Love me some mythology. Oh, so excited. I never watched the first one, so I think I might just watch it for Edge. So we'll see. As you should. I think the series is going to just kind of like be a series on its own, though. I don't think it's going to be related to the movies. Yeah, it's because it's like they got like actual kids to play the kids, not 17 year olds playing children. (laughs) I mean, Uh, I grew up on 17 year olds playing children. Uh, I know. Power Rangers. So there you go. I know, but still, that's um, not how it was supposed to be. It was supposed okay. to be kids playing kids. Now we Spe- get that. Speaking of cameos, uh, Liv Morgan is going to be in episode four of season two of Chucky, which we just launched. Oh, our- I didn't know that. Yeah, so not this week, but next week, because this uh, this upcoming week, this Wednesday, is going to be episode three. So two weeks, Liv Morgan has a cameo in Chucky and Katie and I, along with yeah. Justin from the Get Show podcast, just dropped the very first episode of the number one horror podcast on Pornhub, Getting Off, where all we did was talk about Chucky and Child's Play to get everyone ready for season two. And tomorrow night, we will be dropping a huge panel review of Halloween Ends once we all sit down and watch it. So same time tomorrow, right here, Getting Off, episode two. We will be reviewing Halloween Ends. Come check it out. I'll be there. You will be there. And uh, (laughs) along with Spooky Season, uh, also dropped today, was a music video for I Put a Spell on You, done by Shotzi, Scarlett, and Harley Cameron. Um, 
I personally love the musical rendition of I Put a Spell on You from the original Hocus Pocus. So the fact that that's the one that they did and it's fucking Shotzi. Mm -hmm. And Scarlet. And Scarlet. Scarlet and Harley. Shotzi, yeah. Love Scarlet. <sighs> you do. Fucking fantastic. Um. All right. You guys ready to get into the... We oh, uh, Katie, that is a lovely sweater you have on there. Oh my god, thank you so much. This brand new hoodie that I just got. Yeah. It's looking good. Anything <laughs> anything about that as far as like where the money goes or where you where you where you pick that up in case people want to get one? So I got this off of Young Kings Wrestling. Uh this lovely Black Lives Matter pink NWO style for breast cancer awareness. All the proceeds are going to breast cancer awareness uh research and everything like that. If, if, no joke, one of the softest hoodies I've ever owned, and I've been wearing it all day since I got home from work. This is, it, look how beautiful it is. I don't like it's pink. It's clean as fuck. Yes. Yeah. Go get it. Make it subtle too. So, if you want to donate to breast cancer awareness, or uh, all the money is curated by TC and donated directly from TC, it doesn't go through a third party. Um, it is not in any way, shape, or form affiliated with the Black Lives Matter organization. It is just about the movement. So if you'd like to support that cause or breast cancer awareness, you can get the pink ones. They also have them in black and white. TC does great things with those uh, donations that he receives from the shirts. So go ahead and support that. And while we're talking about shirts, because I think it's been a little while since I plugged this, we do have these. Oh, that's such a good idea. <clears throat> Pro wrestling, pro choice T-shirts, designed by Jizzy from the Dead Ass Girls, up on sale on our Teespring and on Katie's Teespring, and all of the money that we receive if you go buy one of those shirts for us goes directly to the Women's Reproductive Rights Assistance Project, and from Katie, if you go get that, all that money goes to Planned Parenthood. So either way, you can get the same shirt in different colors from both of us. Support two different causes. <laughs> Um, because over here we support women's rights and we support okay. Black Lives Matter or the I movement. Love the show. So <laughs> all right, now let's get into the fun part why we're all here to spit and swallow the week in wrestling. <laughs> Queen PR spit or swallow. I am gonna swallow <laughs> everything, Sami Zayn. He is just a gem. Like, I've always been a huge fan of his. Like, he's always just been so funny. And I love the whole, like, documentary thing that he was doing. Like, he was always really good at that on top of, like, putting on good matches. And then Kevin Owens, of course. But this Bloodline thing is hilarious. Like, the Jay Uso, like, beef that they have. Like, I was just watching on SmackDown when he and Roman called him. And he was, like, talking shit. And then he was like, oh, he's right here. <laughs> he's fucking great. His comedic time is fantastic. So good. Yeah. Everything we've got between Monday night, well, I mean, over the last few weeks, but specifically this week, between Monday Night Raw and SmackDown from... Uh, the bloodline coming out, Roman getting in Jay's ass, Sammy interrupting and being like, hey, 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 listen, you said he's my problem. Let let me take care of this. I got this. And Roman's like, all right, yeah, he's your problem. Spitting the fact that Riddle came out, decided that he just did not care, apparently, that he lost a match and the stipulation was he is no longer allowed to challenge for a title. He thought, you know, he got high and thought he could just forego that fuck. Fuck Riddle. Um, but Sammy <laughs> stepping up to the plate and being like, all right, well, Roman said you ain't getting a title shot, but I'll do it. And Jay gaslighting him to get there. Like, yes, yeah, Sammy, why don't you step up that whole thing? Roman leaving and telling Jay he's got to stay behind and hang out with Sammy and make sure Sammy wins. And then Jay deciding not to and allowing Riddle to get the win, which then led to the conversation you were talking about on SmackDown with Roman calling Sammy, handing the phone to Jay, getting in Jay's ass, handing it back to Sammy, them laughing, and Jay's like, what did he say? He's like, oh, it's an inside joke. You wouldn't get it. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At one point, he even says, like, oh, it's family business. Like, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, because uh, no, Jay, I think that Jay was telling Sammy 
about Jimmy, why Jimmy wasn't there. It's like, oh, it's family business. And then Sammy retorted with like, well, if it was family business, then I think I'd know. I think all, I knew all about that. What I also like too is the dynamic of like Roman, how he comes off like he's about to just tear a new one onto Sammy. And he's like, and he just laughs it off. It's like, oh, you know what? Yeah, Sammy, you are the honorary use. You are handling this now. This is your problem. So I, I, I love the whole dynamic. You call it beef between Jay and Sammy. I call it chemistry. I th- like. I think oh, that's 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 chemistry. They are amazing to, like together. But also, we knew about Jay Uso's, you know, character skills back during the pandemic with him and Roman. So it's mm-hmm. just continuing on. That's, you know, that. back when that PTSD started. <clears throat> right, right. Mm-hmm. And then we also got the match tonight where Jay helped Sammy get the win, uh, <clears throat> fulfilling his duties. And then they go in the back, and Jay's trying to take credit for helping. And Sammy's like, I, I didn't see you do anything. And he's like, so you, you saw it, right? He's like, no, I was, I was watching Sammy. And actually, I could learn a lot from Sammy. And just watching the anger in Jay grow and grow every time they slight this man yeah. and refuse to cut him any slack. It's one of my favorite things going on in wrestling, period, today. It's the it's- it's, it's best. Same. Question. Um, during Raw, did you guys hear all the Sammy Oos chants? Yes. Because mm-hmm. like Sammy it was Oose. like they the whole yeah. <laughs> like during the, the whole time, like Brooklyn was just like they kept like screaming that. And I just was like, yo, this is amazing. Were you at Raw? <laughs> I was, I was, yeah. Oh Barclay, yep. so even better. DX. We will talk about that. Uh, Katie or Vince, you guys have anything else on Sammy and the Bloodline? I'm done. No, just that it literally is the best thing. And besides everything Bray, this is the best thing in wrestling. Well, you know how I feel about my Bray Wyatt. So I know. I love him so much. <laughs> and we'll get there as well. Um, Katie, spit or swallow? Um, I'm going to have to swallow Renee Paquette in AEW. A, love her. Love her to pieces. Everything she has done for this business. Talking Smack with Dana O'Brien was the best show weekly for the longest time. Anything wrestling, that was the shit. And her on commentary was fantastic for her. That being like her first time and her being on the main show and doing that. Now she's so happy. in uh, like a backstage interview for AEW. I personally would have preferred her taking JR's spot on commentary, but mm-hmm. that's fine. Um, and then she, she was in Canada. She was in Canada. Like, that's where she's from. It was great. She opened the show. That's my girl. I love Renee. And now, maybe it's since she's there, we can convince Mox to go on a vacation. <laughs> she's like, you motherfucker, you won't go on a vacation with me. Now I gotta come work with you to get this shit situated. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, technically, I, I mean, they're going to do work, but, like, if you travel around the country together, isn't, isn't every every show kind of like a mini vacation? Yeah, but he was supposed to have six weeks away from this shit. Well, it things might have happened, been the case. people fought. Yeah, people it, it might have it, it been the case, Katie, that, like, TK was like, dude, I need you. I got nobody right now. I need you as my top guy right now with the championship. And Renee's like, okay, well, fuck it. If I can't go on vacation with my husband, I guess I'll just go to work with him. So I think that's what it was. It's literally literally what happened. Mox is like, well, I've been carrying this company already. I might as well keep fucking doing it since you won't let me leave. I mean, people enjoy biting. I'm not going to knock anyone for biting or anything that they may have done. So like that, that is a thing, you know, we don't kink shame here, Katie. So I know. Hey, I know. I'm just saying. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, but yeah, no, I was so happy to see Renee show up. You know, there were rumors about it and everything like that. She's there. She interviews another Canadian and Christian before Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus have that match, which is actually a spit for me because they start this feud mm-hmm. and it plays out through all out. And then they're really like, there were a couple promos here, there, but like, this is supposed to be a blood feud. And I know Christian got injured. But Lucha Source is okay. So, like, why have we not gotten more? Because now I'm watching Dynamite and I'm supposed to be really hyped for this match between Lucha Source and Jungle Boy, which was a good match. And I got to see Lucha Source work like the big man that he is, you know, the, the new Kane, if you will. Uh, but 
it didn't feel like it should have with his best friend betraying him and all of this stuff going on like the animosity to me just wasn't there because we've waited and waited and waited for weeks and all we got was a couple of okay promos i yeah. mean aw has that issue of not pulling the trigger when they need to on a lot of stuff so oh are we surprised not really not really i was hyped when luchasaurus like first turned into like the dinosaur cane but now it's like it's it's lost its luster and then like christian in this in the turtleneck yeah, like, i'm not feeling it i like jungle boy <laughs> like i i brian i know you he, you find him annoying but i man I, I like jungle boy jack perry he's a sweetheart and he has a great theme song i love it hey Hi. warren joined us what's up warren <laughs> Uh, now Warren's here because he'll he'll enjoy hearing this. I got a question for you guys. In the case of AEW and you know not pulling the trigger, is it better to blow your load early or just not blow it at all? I'd rather blow my blow load it. early than yeah. not blow it at all. Right. Yeah. Also, yes, Warren. I watch mostly every week unless Jericho shows up, in which case I turn off the television and then I go watch the replay and fast forward through all the Jericho stuff. But so I watch. watch like the first three segments of Dynamite. Yes, which are usually the best. Like we just said, blow your load early. So I get to watch it all. Uh, speaking of blowing your load early, Vince, spit or swallow? Uh, I'm going to start with uh, something that wasn't even on the wrestling TV. I'm, I'm swallowing Top Dollar's diss track on like, out of the Fantasm. <laughs> <What>? That dropped <laughs> drop this uh, this. Uh, this Friday, it was fucking fantastic. I loved it. He had bars. And look, I love Legato, but they got fucking cooked. Ugh. They got fucking cooked. And as a double swallow, I'm going to swallow the fact that even though they got cooked on the disc, they did get their dub on SmackDown. So kudos to that. And on the second to last day of Hispanic Heritage Month. So there's that. Oh, nice. So there's that. I'm with you, dude. That that whole uh, 50 Cent back down cover that he dropped on YouTube he destroyed Legato. And as we talked about last week, you have conceded to the war. Uh, the 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 Chicago. I, I read the text. Yes, it was there. Yes. Okay. Uh, so I, uh, I I'm not gonna say it's not true because I'm I'm gonna acknowledge the fact that I sent the text saying the feud's over. You won, meaning. The Tony D beat Santos Escobar. They left NXT. The Don won. Fine. I give you your kudos. I give you your props. But at the end of the day, Tony D is injured and Santos Escobar is on main roster. So who really won? And what was it the top dollar said about, you know, leaving Electra behind and pointing that out? Like, I like that. I like that he didn't like, like go past it. I mean, Sangra, Demi Sangra. Back. Oh, I love it! I love it, and I and I want to retort. I want to retort, not in a lyrical way, but actually explain it on storyline as to what happened to Electro Lopez. Yeah, uh, but yeah, no Legato versus Hit Row. Legato gets the win. Uh, Warren is not a fan of Top Dollar because he does not feel like Top Dollar is a great baby face. Uh, again, I disagree. I, I mean, I think I get... he has a great face. I can see why Warren would say that. Yeah, I <laughs> but he entertains the shit out of me so i'm kind of i fall into that there are not uh traditional heel and face roles where if you entertain me you entertain me i don't really care where you're at so i need them to take what he's doing on youtube and put it on tv because these diss tracks and ciphers and everything that they're that he's doing on youtube on his own are fantastic and yeah he said shit but he, they censored it so you could have played right. that like at, in a promo video like, wasn't it wasn't it last week on the show that you guys discussed that uh they should be doing that as like their promos like instead of doing the ciphers on live tv they should be doing like a pre-recorded cipher or like this track type promo backstage and roll that you okay yeah <laughs> well not you, not Vince. you. obviously you're okay <laughs> We're not I checking mean, I, on you. <laughs> I know you weren't checking on me. You muted your mic. We can't hear you now. Who, me? No. Nope. Vince. <laughs> oh, my God. But, yeah. 
I love how Vince. Oh, there we are. I'm glad that Vince, you're okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, Vince, okay. we're so glad you're okay. Vince, this is for you. Are his world. <laughs> Brother, this guy stinks. Ah, uh, yeah, love it. <laughs> Moving on, Matt. Moving on. Uh, obviously, I am going to swallow Bray Wyatt. Uh, yes. I, I have never been this invested in anything in wrestling since the debut of the Fiend. Since the Fiend left and everything happened after WrestleMania, there has been a void in my wrestling love. Uh, I, I hoped Malachi Black would fill it in AEW. He did not. Um, I, I prayed for the day that Bray Wyatt would return and everything that they have done with the QR codes and the white rabbit and all the stuff leading up to the return at extreme rules. And then tonight, the promo that he cut where he was just himself and he was emotional and he was thanking the fans and telling us we kept him alive as much as he kept us alive. We saved him the way that people like me have said he saved us. And he was almost in tears Yet they still fade to black and the masked man, the other version of Bray comes on the TV and gives a cryptic message, cuts him off mid promo, and then we fade to black. I am so intrigued and interested and anxious for what is going to happen next. And I have not felt that way in wrestling. Like, every time I talk about what I love in wrestling, this is what I love in wrestling. This is what I love about wrestling. This is why I watch. Yeah, it was Same. great. It was fantastic, dude. And like, he's a handsome motherfucker. Yes, he, he looks he great. He really does. And it's like, like we don't know. <laughs> we don't know what to expect with him now, even more so because he has like more creative freedom. I feel, and now it's like you have to watch it. Like during SmackDown tonight, I was like, when can I take a shower? Because you know. Bray Wyatt, you know, that he might do, who knows, like, what the fuck. And, like, going back to that can't miss feeling where you're, like, thinking about, like, what's next, like, even when you're not watching wrestling. And I really miss that, too. I know. Yeah. This is this A, Bray crying. Bitch, I was crying. I I can't. That that was too emotional for me. I was just like, God, 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 God. He's been through so like, much. Yeah, we get it. Like, the- I wasn't, ex- like, I didn't know what to expect, like, when he came out. And, like, he does look so good. And just, like, you can hear him, like, the cracks in his voice when he's talking made it that much better. And then with the whole second, ma- like, the mask and the, the screen and that. How-, how you end SmackDown with that shit? Hunter, we gotta talk. I don't like cliffhangers. What the <laughs> fuck? Uh, but I've seen a lot of speculation on the Twitter, you know, the toxic place we all love. Um, a lot of people were saying that it's basically just Bray's demons. So mm-hmm. it's the entire, like, Funhouse characters that we saw and the mask man. That's basically, like, what that's gonna be. I don't know. But it sounded cool the way somebody explained it. I just don't remember. I think I saw that post where like every every character was like a version of Bray, like almost like a personality, like like from the movie Split, like how they have multiple personality yeah. disorder, and that's probably what Bray has. And this is like the main altar, like that we saw doing the promo, like the fiends in altar, the other worlds in this altar, uh, Funhouse Bray. Husk is the pig, Abby the witch, and everyone else. I like that, but I like to believe that it's still going to be a faction. At least I hope it is. But that's what's so great about this is even though he showed up and like we got the answers to follow the white rabbit and is it him because there were teasers. You know, people were like, oh, you know, if you decode this in, in binary, it says Gacy and it's going to be uh joe gacy or oh malachi black's lyrics are in the source code of this video so it it could be alistair returning or oh it's this person like we got that we got there and then even though he's back it's all right so are all of these people members of the white six is it going to be a faction is you know everyone going to be unmasked and they're going to reveal five new members now is it is it just you know this is the sixth iteration of bray and these are 
alternate because I talked about it. You know, Mercy the Buzzard based on Waylon Mercy. It was the original character that he came up with in NXT. Then you go to Ramblin' Rabbit, which is him on the main roster coming up, and he's cutting those long promos where he rambles and rambles and rambles and goes on about all of the stuff. Then you get to the Abby the Witch stuff, which is the Eater of Worlds Bray, where, you know, he talks about Sister Abigail and does all of those things. And then you get to, obviously, uh, The Fiend. There was also, you know, Husky, Harris, Huskus the Pig, boy, mm -hmm. that whole connection. Then you get to The Fiend. We saw the burned Fiend mask, and then we saw The Fiend in the crowd. And then out comes him, and if you count, it's one, two, three, four, five, now six. So is it the sixth iteration of Bray? Is it a six-person faction? Who's going to be in it? Like the questions never stop and the speculation doesn't stop, which is what makes it so intriguing because nobody fucking knows. We all guess, but nobody yeah. knows. Yeah, it's it's all speculation at this point. And I'm even seeing like, like I, I don't know if you guys are not, but like speculation, like the reports that like Triple H actually has like a long term plan for Bray and this white six, whatever it becomes leading up all the way to WrestleMania. And I hope that's the case. He needs to have a high profile match at Mania. Just look at that crowd. Like the fireflies, everything is fantastic. It's all amazing. I just kind of hope that he on screen murders Matt Riddle. Um, you know, <laughs> sets him on fire. You know, revenge for the whole Randy Orton thing because he never. So since Randy, you know, broke his back carrying Matt Riddle for all those months, and we don't know if he's coming back. Like, let him, you know, let him get his revenge on Matt Riddle. We don't really need him if if Bray does light him up on fire, he's probably going to use the fire that he's covered it in to light a joint. So he <laughs> might go out getting hot. So if, if that's the that's Matt Riddle on fire live on TV, I will come on the stream nude that week. Nude? Yeah. Nude. Fully I, nude. I don't, know. I, don't know. I, mean, I don't think YouTube or Twitch will allow that. I mean, they're not going to see anything. Uh, the the here. Will. You're just going to see from the chest up. Like, you'll be all right. Sure, Matt. Let the titties loose. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Jesus is always telling me to take my shirt off. So why not you? Why not you take your shirt off? You you can lead by example. Uh, we are still waiting for both the OnlyFans and you to strip for Jesus. So Jesus yeah. is in Chicago. So like I could have stripped for him, but he's nowhere to be found. So oh. we don't know. Wow. We don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I'll keep you updated. Warren's keeping tabs. <laughs> if, Warren's keeping tabs. If, if Riddle gets lit on fire, I will be nude for that episode. Clip it. Uh, Queen PR, spit or swallow? I'm going to swallow CNDX at Raw in Brooklyn. That was, I mean, like my childhood just right there coming out in the original, like in a t the tank, like them shouting out China first thing. Um, the ringer crew being front row and them, um, I think it was Road Dog who shouted out Kaz. Um, so just like I was there with Krista B, you know, it was Brooklyn. So that whole experience, I'm swallowing like two or three times. But the show in general, too, is like really good. They did fantastic. The opening segment with Triple H being so like, oh, I'm corporate now, guys. We can't do that. Going through all the swearing, <laughs> having the cocks because Vince loves cocks, uh, <laughs> him choking the chicken, Classic. all of this. And then doing the perfect thing because i think the one thing everyone was worried about was you know what they did at the raw reunion where dx and all these old tag teams come out and they squash someone like uh oh what the fuck was their name revival uh, no well the revival or i was thinking of the uh other the ascension the ascension yeah mm, yeah but they didn't do that like they came out they <laughs> paid you know xbox paid tribute to china they even as they were talking about you know some other guy who works with office supplies and you got HBK in the back doing this the scissor motion for Billy Gunn since he couldn't be there. Like they just they did a really nice thing for us. You know, if we're back here in 25 years, put us out of our misery. Uh, <laughs> that was a good job. one. Yeah. They played all the hits, they played all the DX played sets. All the it was great. It was very short and condensed. It didn't overstay its welcome to the point right. where it just kind of feels awkward. And you just send right. send the crowd home happy. Like Queen PR, you were you were there in the crowd. I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. that was. A great way to set it to close off the show. Perfect way, perfect way. And of course, you know you're expecting them. They play the music throughout the whole show, and like I pop every time I hear it. And I'm like, all right, like are they gonna come out or what? But like you said, it, we went home very happy. Krista got her glow sticks. It, it was great. 
<laughs> I want some glow sticks. Those, it's the little things in life. <laughs> <laughs> like glow, glow sticks. sticks. DX glow sticks. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, Katie, spit or swallow. Yo. Uh, I'm gonna stick with my my AEW uh, theme here. Um, I'm swallowing the return of Sean Spears as the perfect ten. Ooh. That was my. I, I Sean yes. Spears as a human being is fantastic. Um, like I love him just as a person and seeing him come back in Canada because he's from he's Canadian um, oh. and bringing back the perfect 10 gimmick, which was one of my favorite things. I know why you're making that face. Shut up. Hold on. That was one of my favorite things in NXT when he was Ty Dillinger. The perfect 10 gimmick was so perfect, pun intended. And on Rampage, when he came out for uh, the tag match with FTR, like, he even had, like, the 10 sign and, like, did the whole shebang, like, the old entrance. And it just made me happy. And I know why Matt's upset or making that face, because the pinnacle isn't a thing or shouldn't be a thing anymore. I'm assuming that's what you're doing that face for. I mean, I am happy that Ty Dillinger has returned He's doing the perfect 10 thing. He's hanging out with Warjo because Warjo fucks hard. Yes. I, I can't name a show that without getting on trouble, but I can say it. <laughs> um, YouTube. Anyway. However, yes, the fact that somehow after MJF basically disbanded the pinnacle and everyone went there, like FTR and Wardlow have like, decided that they're just going to have this faction that MJF created without MJF and then they bring back Sean Spears as a babyface part of this faction when it was a heel like it's a weird thing to me and it should not exist and I don't understand it so yes you are correct Katie that's why I was making but, those funny faces but Ty Dillinger is back Sean Spears is back but it's better than the chairman gimmick that he had I was going just going to say yeah. that it, was, it just didn't hit like it just was no he looked cool he, he looks like a cool wrestler when he has like the contacts and he does the entrance it's it's, it's cool the aesthetic he looks like a cool wrestler <laughs> he looks like a cool wrestler he looks like someone i'd make in wwe 2k22 so he's got that going for him yeah. pretty sure that's devin from clark street what's going on devin uh also i'm gonna swallow the fact that qt marshall got his ass beat by warjo and uh whoever whichever one of his lackeys from his school Ooh. tagged with him in that match because oh, yeah. fuck qt marshall I yeah. forgot. Keith no, it was uh, it was the the big hairy one. Um, Nick Camarado. Camarado, yeah, that one. Camarado. They're they're caveman Carl. Caveman uh, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so seeing QT get his ass beat, getting Wardlow, who I know is one of Vince's favorite wrestlers. The best. The best. The best. Sarcasm is implied. <laughs> <laughs> Katie and I have been trying to figure out for months why Vince can't get on the Ward Low train. I never bought a ticket to climb on board. Choo choo, motherfucker, join, join the train. No, 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 no. The only train I'm hopping on is the one that takes me to Hogwarts, and that's about it. Oh, uh, I don't want to talk about it. I'm sad. Whatever. Talk about that. Um, <laughs> that was harsh. I, I love it. Oh, Potter Squidward done the whole thing. Uh, that was more so for Vince. Yes. he's not getting on the Wardlow train. Yeah, Vince sucks. Yeah, Ooh, yeah. Tomato, tomato. I thought you were just gonna hit me with a little Wayne sound bite and call it a day. I thought about it, but I had to scroll up and then the, the moment passed. Too much. I, uh, I, I, I and you didn't really. I, I gotta say that for when you spit something that you should swallow. So I was trying yeah. to set you up, and you didn't fall for the bait. No, no, I know. Because, like I said to start off the show, I'm tiptoeing around the sun bites. Mm. <laughs> we'll get you. Don't worry. You'll fuck up. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know. Uh, You'll fuck up. Speaking of fucking up, uh, Vince, spit or swallow. <laughs> okay. I guess that's one way to transition. Um, this is originally going to be a, like a whole ass rant for me. But I'm just gonna save that rant and like let things play out, so to speak. Like Young Kings Wrestling likes to say, "TC, bless you, bless you." Um, we got time. If you want to rant? Rant? No, I'm gonna. 
No, no, it's it's fine because I feel better t- after tonight. I'm gonna swallow the fact that they got rid of Rey Mysterio and the Dominic uh, dynamic, moved them over to SmackDown. I I I wasn't a fan of him being like, oh, I'm gonna quit. I don't want to fight my son. Yada yada, whatever. If he was a real Mexican, he would have just beat his ass with a belt. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> but no, they moved him over to SmackDown. He won the Fatal Four Way match. He's the number one contender to face Gunther. Granted, I don't think he's going to beat Gunther for that IC title, but he's going to make Gunther look like a million bucks, and he's going to flop like a fish for him. He's going to look like a magic carp up in that ring. It's going to be a great match, because Rey Mysterio versus a bigger wrestler always hits. They always have great chemistry. No. This is a spin. Listen, Rey Mysterio, going on three years running, worst father in wrestling, refuses, refuses to discipline his child, and then, after everything that happened on Raw, where he's basically being begged by his son to discipline him and will not do it and then pays the price, we runs to SmackDown and says, listen, Run, like, on some of the most white people shit I have ever seen in my life, where they're like, we don't hit our children, we don't discipline our children, we don't tell our children, no, like, that kind of shit, which we don't do around here. Uh, he's like, I'm just gonna quit my job and uh, because I, I can't fight my own child. And they're like, No, we'll move you to SmackDown so you don't have to deal with your problems. He went out for a pack of smokes and ain't coming back, and I ain't letting that shit slide. We're so, not doing that over here. Like, like I said, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and let things play out just a little bit. I wasn't feeling Ray Mister is booking recently, which is where my rant was going to. And again, I don't want to rant about it because he just won. The number one contendership match. Regardless Which you didn't of the, deserve. You can't discipline your own child. Care. You don't get don't title care. shots. That's not how I don't, that works. I, I don't care. I like Rey Mysterio. He's in my Mount Rushmore of wrestling. I he got a championship con- uh, match. How am I not going to swallow that? And he <laughs> is one of the cornerstones of SmackDown. Like if you think SmackDown Rey Mysterio is one of the faces, so him being on SmackDown that also is a swallow. Regardless of the gymnastics and loopholes they had to maneuver to get him there. Like, just get him away from Judgment Day. Get him away from Dom because that was terrible. Like, now Dom can do his own thing. Ray can do his own thing because obviously they didn't want to do Ray versus Dom. They're probably going to push that towards later on, or maybe they just didn't want to do it, period. So I'm just glad it's over with. His own children. Yo, like, Matt just can't get over this. Like, no, and it's. And I mean, it's if, if Ray would have smacked Dom eight months ago, none of this would have happened. If Ray would have whooped his ass when that kid was a child, we wouldn't be here. If we had taught that child some respect back when you know they were fighting for custody. Eddie would have done it. Eddie almost did it in the ladder match. Eddie was <laughs> his real dad was down for whooping his ass. And I said this on Twitter. Listen, Ray, you are the stepfather, but you're not just a stepfather. You're the father that stepped up. Now step up to the plate and take a <laughs> swing at that kid, please. Take a swing at that kid. <laughs> on God. But but I am gonna find uh, find out. Uh, Final point is I'm going to retort with the fact that he didn't actually run away to SmackDown. He went to SmackDown to talk to Triple H personally to be like, hey, I'm out of here. I don't want to fight my child. I can't. Like, I'm not doing this. And then Triple H was the one that's like, hey, you know what? Let, let's, let's talk. Let, let's talk this out. Now, ahead, now wait a minute. Wait a minute here. Why? Because we, we know Triple H boys. was on Raw. Why wouldn't Ray just talk to Hunter then? Why did he have to run to smack it attacked. down? Because he was attacked by the Judgment Day, and storyline wise, he was probably in a medical facility. He after literally down. didn't he leave under his own power, and he was just crying. No, no. not that I, re- like not I, that I recall. Not even that. You say he didn't run away to SmackDown? No, he ran away. He was going to run away from the whole company. He was gonna put he was gonna put Angie's financial future in jeopardy. He's got oh, Aaliyah no, who's raising no, that, Buddy that, Matthews' that man, baby that, at that home. That, that because they got that Australian set. listen, no, they got an Australian fight, fetish. Aaliyah's at least got two kids by Buddy Matthews at this point that Ray's gotta help raise because he's out of the picture. <laughs> like and he was gonna quit his job and just let there's a formula shortage, sure, sir. Like you can't just quit your job. You gotta be able to buy that formula. Like mm-mm. he was running away. He ran. He was. He was. 
Uh, on that week. note, though, some things from that I will swallow. I will swallow during that whole segment on Raw, Rhea bringing up a beating up Beth Phoenix and why she took that Beth Phoenix out. Awesome. She took and Beth the only special. cool thing Dom has ever said, which is it got me off. Did it get you guys off? <laughs> I swallow that, yo. That's the best thing he's ever said. Literally yeah. ever. <laughs> uh, we also got Finn calling out AJ and AJ pretending like he is going to join the OC or the uh, the executioners, Judgment Day, uh, the executioners as I call them. Um, but we hear him say, I'm my brother's keeper and the rumors were running wild all the way up until... The Good Brothers come back, which is only a swallow for one reason, because now I get to talk about Hot Carl again. Hot Carl. I have not been able to talk about Hot Carl for a long time. Now we get to talk about Hot Carl again. Because there is a full episode where he referred to himself, Carl Anderson called himself Hot Carl, and Travis and I broke down what Hot Carl is. And if you're not familiar, uh, I'm not going to educate you right now. Just Google it. Okay. <laughs> you're going to regret it, but Google it. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not Googling it. I'm not falling into your trap. Can Google it right now, actually? All right. Well, when Vince, Vin, while Vince Googles that, uh, I, I see, like, Gals and Anderson coming back is just a parable, right? It's like I don't yeah. really, care them, but it's another tag team for this division that Triple H is slowly building back up, right? So it's like <laughs> Vince, <laughs> didn't they? I agree. Well then. That's some definition, Urban Dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not doing it. You shouldn't. You really shouldn't. I'm not going to. I'm not going to the track. You really I'm gonna just copy and paste the description onto the chat and let the chat experience it. <laughs> I saw they see it. Uh, my next spit or swallow actually is going to be. Uh, the Miz's birthday bash on Raw. Oh no! Listen, <laughs> listen. I love everything Dexter Loomis. Right? We got Maurice coming out looking his only Ugh. Maurice can. Jeez. She got the Miz some nice hardwood, two big balls to carry around since he doesn't have a pair of his own. Sure. We played Whack a Loomis under the presence. Uh, Maurice ends up getting kicked by Miz into the cake while Dexter's trying to cuddle him to sleep again. Mm -hmm. Loomis pops Miz's balls and eats Maurice's cake live on TV, which is a phrase I never thought I'd get to say, but I do now because of this segment. Uh, it was the most Vince McMahon segment ever. Um, and then uh, DX hyping up some jobbers to go out and lose to Omus and then tells Miz, listen, if you want to get rid of Dexter, challenge him to a match. And if he loses, then he's gone. But if he wins, he gets a contract. Mm. So this is how we get Dexter officially. This is the payoff that we've been waiting for to get Dexter officially into the fold of WWE. We can move on from here. We can do other things and have him stalk and hunt and cuddle other people to sleep. I'm all for it. Yes, yes, Vincent. I'm all for it. Uh, First off, I want to just ask is is the fact that we still don't know why he targeted Miz not like something you're even curious about? Because like, yeah, this is going to be the payoff of how he gets actually added as an active member of the roster, but it's not the payoff to as to why he's targeting Miz. Does he just want to actually see if he has tiny balls or big balls or wants to actually see for himself? Does he, he wants to take a gander of what Miz is going with? Uh, does he just find Miz attractive, or is he just very fascinated by Miz, or he just has some kind of artistic, creative flair that only Miz can satisfy? So I kind of want to know why he's doing this. It doesn't matter why, but I want to know why. It could be just I, for the simple fact that he left his car keys in Miz's pocket and he can <laughs> never retrieve them. You know, I just want to know why. I need an explanation. Or anyone, too. I have two theories. Uh, theory number one is Miz is just a really good cuddler. <laughs> I can see. Uh, I believe him. I think that's the reason. Theory number two is Miz is a fantastic character. Miz is a fantastic promo. Miz is a good wrestler, not a very entertaining 
entertaining in-ring performer, but a great wrestler as is. Uh, but maybe telling. Dexter just realized that he wanted a contract and Miz was probably the easiest one to manipulate into doing it. Mm-hmm. He is very know. easily manipulated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He sat here and watched him talk about his balls for weeks and how angry he got and easily goaded into things about his balls. <laughs> Swallow. But I'd like to go with the cuddle. I think it's Mrs. Just a really good cuddle. Well, then th- they should really say that on TV. That it's like I just really wanted to cuddle, Miss. Honestly. That's all. They just got to. Dexter doesn't talk. But Dexter doesn't talk. He can write it on the. On, he can write mm-hmm. a haiku. A he ransom a, note. A poem. He can write a poem. Yes. I like the ransom note idea. That is a fantastic idea. Yes. There you go. A little cut out letters from the magazine. Yes. So you're just a really good cuddler. Back in the day. Yeah. He gets old WWE magazines and then uses them to write the ransom letter. And that's how you bring back WWE magazine. Oh, look at that. Triple H bringing everything back. Fair enough. Uh, well, Vince goes and gets a blowjob. Queen PR, spit or swallow? I'm going to spit uh, everything Braun Strowman because he just doesn't do anything for me. Like, you know, like certain wrestlers where it's just like, you know, I mean, good for him, I guess. Like, you got your job back. Um, but, like, I don't know. It just That's when I got in the shower tonight, actually. It was I, don't when I, was I was like, oh, there we go. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I would love your thoughts on, it, on it, it. It's so funny because, like, you have all of these misogynistic assholes who are always like, oh, the women's match is the bathroom break. And it's, yep. like, the most hyper-masculine person in <laughs> WWE is actually the bathroom break. Yes. Um there was a time where I was behind Braun Strowman. They had really missed it. And I heard it was it was issues with him sh- like leaving early or showing up late and just being disrespectful, which doesn't surprise me whatsoever. I get that vibe from him. Um, I love Team Little Big. That was fantastic during the mixed match challenges. Uh, I did not want to see him come back. Everyone was like, oh, he's going to be part of the Wyatt Six. Mm-mm. I don't want him anywhere near Bray. Don't care about their history. Wanted nothing to do with that. And I said it. There was a time where you could present me with the idea of Braun Strowman versus Omas, and just the spectacle of that view would have enticed me. However, where these two are in their careers and at this point now, I don't give two shits about seeing those guys. Like, if you do good for you, if that, like, if you're excited, if that whole thing, like, I was five when stuff like that got me excited, then if it still gets you excited, that's cool. Like, I'm not knocking you. I, I, I always say... Just because it's not for me doesn't mean it's not for anybody. There are people out there that enjoy that, and I'm not going to knock anyone for enjoying what they enjoy. I just don't give two fucking shits about Braun Strowman, his choo-choo train noises, and all of that. Yes, Katie? Uh, I was just agreeing. It's uh, like, yeah, cool, Braun's back, but like, did we really need him back? No. Like, I understand. (laughs) No, we didn't. Like he f- shape wise, like he looks fantastic. Well, he, he looks. Like, this looks is the good. best. This is the best shape he's been in probably in his entire life. Like, he looks good. Yeah. But, like I don't care. Two and a half star. I think that's being generous. I did. I was thinking that too. <laughs> I'm like, nah. I think I'm good on that. Like you got Omos, who's still green as hell. Talk shit the whole time, and then I'm all like. In. Like, uh, I don't, I'm not about this. Not about that feud. MVP is the best part of that feud. Exactly. Yeah. Vince, any thoughts on Braun Strowman since uh, you're back from your quickie? Uh, No, I heard Braun Strowman and went to go take a dump. That's what happened. That was a fast (laughs) dump. No, no, no. Was it a hot Carl? (laughs) No, it wasn't, sir. Okay. It was not. Because if so, I would, I'd shame you. Melissa deserves better than that. Um, <laughs> Katie, <Spitter Move on. laughs> Um, I'm going to spit everything Chris Jericho and Daniel Garcia. Here's Ooh. why. Let me explain. Chris Jericho sucks. The fact that he is Ring of Honor World Champion pisses me off. I yeah. get 
he was in y'all were in Canada. Woohoo, Canadians, eh? But like why he had to win, I don't care. Give Brian the title. Give Brian a title. Whatever. He shouldn't have won. Daniel Garcia, this hoe, needed to turn his back oh, on Jericho. He said this hoe. This hoe does. Danny's a hoe. <laughs> like, Danny's a hoe. You you had Jericho as your your mentor, your, your hero, whatever. And then you're like, oh, well, like, Brian Danielson, like, dad's actually my hero. I'm a professional wrestler. And then you turn, you had this whole fucking match with Sammy Guevara involved, who pinned your ass. I hate him. And then the next week you're like, actually, you know what? I think I kind of like the Jericho Appreciation Society, so I'm going to screw Daniel Bryan, Brian Danielson, the American Dragon Jake Long, out of a title. (laughs) <laughs> Fuck you, Daniel Garcia, and your stupid hat, you stupid bitch. I love this. Energy. I love all that energy that Katie brought. I second it. I'm spinning everything that's Jericho's existence. I'm spinning the whole storyline between Danny Garcia, the J- Jagoffs, and then Brian Danielson because Brian should be world champion. He should be Ring of Honor world. Champion. He should be a champion, yeah, like Katie honestly. said. Like, this is one of those things where it's like, oh, like, AEW is doing X, Y, and Z. But it's like, Brian, I get it. He doesn't need a championship. He's like HBK when he came back in the early 2000s. He doesn't need a championship. But he should be a champion. He should be a top champion. He should put the title on Brian, let Mox go on vacation for six weeks with Renee, and then they both come back in six weeks' time. Why not do that? So yeah, I, I'm completely over everything Jericho. Just like I, I literally skip, fast forward, mute, pause, that. delete, whatever. I'm done with it. Uh, but I love me some Brian Danielson though. Real quick before you go, Katie, uh, I want to address something that Tim said in the comments. Tim, I'm not saying you're five for liking Braun Strowman and almost. Mm-hmm. I was just saying that 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 big man anticipation, the the Hogan Andre. That's about when that lost its luster for me. I needed more uh, because, like I said, if you guys like it, like I support Warren loves New Japan. New Japan doesn't necessarily always do it for me, but, you know, I support everyone in wrestling finding something that they love. So if you love that, I am cool with it. I'm not going to sh- I'm not going to rain on your parade. I'm not going to, you know, shit on you for it. I'll rain uh, on his parade. It's just not for me. <laughs> but Yeah, you can do that. Um, yes, Katie, what were you going to say? Um, since we brought up Jericho, um, I brought up Jericho, uh, I would like to give a, a swallow to Dalton Castle because I wasn't like a huge, like ring of honor person, but Dalton Castle has just been one of those names that like I've seen clips of and everything he's done. And he has like the boys and like they fan him and everything. And that's a good character to me. And I, everything he was saying in his little thing on rampage, I'm about it. So, a a nice little swallow to Dalton Castle. I'm so sorry he has to wrestle Jericho and lose because, you know, Jericho needs to win every match. Um, But, fuck yeah, Dalton Castle. I have no idea who that is, but I did see him on... I I watched most of Rampage. He's the wrestler Peacock guy that has, like, a bunch of of dudes dressed up how Hangman should be dressed up on a weekly basis. Those are the You're boys, from here. and stop it. <laughs> Hangman no should be about. one of the boys. No. And we're ass a shot. Has he ever Tyler wrestled Bobby Fish for the boys? Uh, cool. No. Which is why didn't Dalton no Castle do like a cup of coffee in NXT like a few years back? Not that uh, I remember. Big time. But I, I just I wasn't familiar with him. I saw him. I was like, okay, that's cool. I guess he has some title Ring of Honor. Uh, sucks that he's got to wrestle Jericho, but. <laughs> Apparently he's okay. thick. Shout out to JJ. Two C's. Uh, he's got he's got some gains since Ring of Honor. Okay, okay. Well then, <laughs> might have to do some research. Uh, Vince Spear Swallow. Boxing <laughs> <laughs> Castle's gains. No, I'm just. Kidding. Uh, <laughs> I'm a. I'm talking about gains, man. We gained Cowboy Brock back on Monday Night Raw. He came. Yeah. Back. Beat the crap out of Bobby Lashley for no reason. 
for no reason. He literally just showed up on my I'm beating up Bobby. That was a and then he got that ass whooping. And then afterwards, we got like a money in the bank esque type cash in, like ma- championship match with Seth Rollins getting that championship that I said he was going to get. I thought it was going to be the WWE or Universal title from Roman eventually, but I'm glad he got the US title. We're pivoting over to Lashley Lesnar, which I want to see. Doesn't need a title. That's fantastic. That's the one match. And one of the reasons why Lashley even came back to the WWE was to have the Lesnar match. So I'm happy for Bobby. I'm happy we got Cowboy Brock. I'm happy Seth got the championship. And it looks like he's away from Riddle forever, hopefully. And yeah, Bobby Lashley didn't look weak in defeat. So this is great. Like all swallows all around. Yes, Katie. Uh, Yeah, I wish. Um, he was getting away from Riddle. No, they have a fucking U.S. title match on Monday. That might be it, though. So, uh, let me uh, let, let's highlight the most important part of this: is uh, the curse of Riddle is real, and I was yeah. right all along. Yes, as I've said yes. on multiple weeks, uh, Matt Riddle and everyone uh, who is associated with them, MSK, Timothy Thatcher. Pete Dunn, a.k.a. Butch, Randy mm-hmm. Orton, the Street Profits, mm-hmm. who could not um, win a match after teaming up with Riddle and, you know, helping him. That's now right. Bobby Lashley says nice things about Matt Riddle and tells him, go kick Seth's <laughs> ass, and here you are getting squashed by Brock and losing your title. Now, this was a fair fight because Seth came in hurt, Bobby got hurt, they went in, they went in as equals. So shout out to my Messiah, the man who's been stomping Seth, uh, Matt Riddle's face into the mat for months now. Seth Rollins on his U.S. title win. And the curse of Riddle takes another victim. If the curse of Riddle was getting possessed, then Seth Rollins is the exorcist priest that's just performing Ooh. exorcisms and ge- expelling all the curses of Riddle. So there's it's that. It's not. It's not opponents, though. It's people he's, like, teamed with and tagged with and everything like that. That's why Seth hasn't been affected. And that's why Seth just won a title. But, like, Maybe Cowboy he's... Brock and Big Bob. Big meaty <laughs> men slapping meat. Let's <laughs> go. Big Bob again? I really love how you said that. Big Bob? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Swallow. Listen, I love, I love me the former... Uh, almighty U.S. champion Bobby Lashley. I love Big Bob. And Cowboy Brock's my favorite iteration of Brock Lesnar. Like, I've gone on record saying I used to hate Brock. Me too. I popped for Brock at SummerSlam in Vegas. And everyone gave me shit for it. But now Cowboy Brock is... He's just having fun. I'm about it. I I love it. I love it. He shows up. I'm about it. About it. Yeah. I love him. Yeah, I'm with it. Love Follow it. that. Uh, that was you, right, Vince? Yeah, that was me. All right. I am going to swallow Candace LeRae versus Bailey and pretty much damage control right now because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they won the tag team titles. Bailey has not been doing so well. So uh Bailey, you know, beating down Candace LeRae afterwards, them taking out Bianca. They're starting to get damage control back on the right track, which we saw tonight. With Roxy, Roxanne's main roster debut match before she goes back to NXT, where she picked Raquel Gonzalez for her pick your poison opponent for Cora Jade, got into a six woman tag with my heart, Shotzi Blackheart, uh, <laughs> and Raquel. And uh, Bailey gets the win in that match. And Roxanne had a great showing. So, all of that for damage control. The fact that I got to see Bailey versus Candace, huge swallow. I mean, yeah. Uh, on the oh yeah, it was good. And I, I have my feelings about Candice LeRae. Like she's a fantastic wrestler. Um, but you know, I don't know. But that match definitely, she was presented very well in that match. Because I think about people like my dad who didn't watch NXT and don't know anything about the Indies, who was like, "Who's this girl going against my favorite Bailey?" And then her having that match and being like, "Okay, mm-hmm. yeah. she's good. this is good shit." That's probably one of the best way to highlight Candice LeRae to put her in the ring and let her go off in the ring. Mm-hmm. Uh, and to add to what you were saying, Matt, about like Roxy showing up, I don't know if you guys heard or not, but commentary 
announced that Cora J was going to show up on Raw mm-hmm. to announce her opponent for uh, for Roxy on NXT. Ooh. Cora Jade question, announced that on NXT as well because oh I didn't I didn't I didn't catch that I, I watched so the there was, version of NXT. There was a whole thing where she was getting interviewed and they're like, "Well, have you heard that Roxanne is going to go to SmackDown?" She goes, "Wait, Ro- she doesn't have friends. She can't just go to who's she going to go talk to?" And then she like left and she came back. And she goes, "Oh yeah, well if she's going to SmackDown, then I'm going to go to Raw." Oh okay. I, know, I already know who she's going to play. Uh, okay, Natty, because. <laughs> Yeah, Natty. no, Natty's on SmackDown. Natty does everything. Yeah, she's and, Natty, do anything Natty, she Natty has uh blackmail over the McMahon dy- Helmsley dynasty, so Natty can do whatever she wants. Just it's ask you. Um, but I guess my oh. question to you guys uh is are you glad or are you okay with them going to Raw and SmackDown? Yes, to get exposure and announcing or like asking who they want to be the opponent for for the other or would you have mm-hmm. rather had that be a thing that's a surprise thing before the match starts on NXT on Tuesday? I like that they well because it was announced that it could be any woman in WWE. Yeah. So when that was announced they were, they took that opportunity to be like, "Well, I can go pick someone that the other one has history with or whatever." Like Roxy chose Raquel and her and Cora were fucking tag partners, and I completely forgot about that. So, like, it's a good thing for them to go up, possibly have a match, get more exposure, like, more TV time, because both of them are good, and, like, that's one of your kind of, like, main views right now down in NXT. Mm-hmm. So, I think it's I think it's a good thing. Like, I am because we get to, like, see them interact with other people. Yeah, and yeah, that's I love that. how they're figuring I, I it out. Like, I wouldn't I have liked like the that. surprise. So I'm, like, I'm well, just a fan of the surprises. That? I'm just a fan of the surprises me just too. because it reminds me of like the rumble or when like someone surprisingly shows up. When Johnny Gargano's music hit, I didn't actually read the spoilers or anything. I just heard his music hit and I just like got there, giddy like schoolgirl. So that's there what was I want. No spoilers yeah. for Johnny showing up. All right, so here's what we're gonna do because I yeah. know you you are gonna have to go pretty soon, uh, Queen PR. So. We'll do one more round with you. So we'll go to you and then Katie, then Vince, then me, and then I'll let you plug your stuff. Um, so I'm going to let you start. I will be right back. But uh, yeah. Uh, I am going to swallow. <laughs> um, damn, we already said the bloodline, but I love how we're really seeing like Solo because. And I was just talking to um, one of my dearest friends about this, um, how he actually predicted that he's a future world champion. Um, and I didn't think about it. And I was like, you know what? He never to me felt like an NXT guy on the main roster. Like he looks to me like he belongs. Yes. Um, and I like that he's a, you know, a different, you know, reiteration of, you know, the Samoan, you know, like he's, Kind of more the um, what's his name? Umaga. Yes, <laughs> like yes, that. Very much so. Yeah, and um, I really appreciate that. And then again, like he fits in the character work that they're all doing. Like he fits in perfectly. Like, oh, I, sure. I, I'm all I'm all about him. I want to swallow him. <laughs> yes. I mean, same, but. <laughs> Solo Solo is so good. Like having Solo be the enforcer for Mm -hmm. the bloodline is genius because Roman's part time now, so he's not wrestling a lot. The Usos, yeah, they're on screen, but like they're also not really wrestling a lot. So that leaves you with at before Solo showed up, that just left you with Sammy, which Mm -hmm. love Sammy to pieces. We praised him earlier. Love Sammy. But now having Solo who kicks ass. And was a, and is a former NA champion, uh-uh. but you know then got disrespectfully. That sounds good. Dude. That looks good. Strip. <laughs> yeah, looks, this looks better. Um, Vince just thought he could take my spot while I was. Gone. I didn't. I didn't oh, take your spot. Dis- that's just what happened. Just like wow. that's what Streamyard did. That's great. I was about to move you even before you made your hissy face when you joined Ooh. back onto the chat, <laughs> but. <laughs> Oh, I what I I what I like about Solo and what I continue to swallow is the aesthetic of him because he yeah. looks like the Usos, 
but gear wise, like you have like the shorts and like the the towel, like Samoa Joe. But he reminds me in ring, like a new maga, like you were saying, Queen. So I love it. He's kind of like a, a, a fusion and mixture. It's kind of it, it kind of like the Powerpuff Girls where you get sugar spice and everything yep. nice, yep. but you get sugar spice and everything nice from all the Samoans in in wrestling, <laughs> yes. and then you get solo. Yes. So that's yes. that, that's what happens. That's what happened there. It's that. almost like maybe he should have won instead of the bad father. Tonight. That's what I was thinking too. Because okay, so like let me have this. I'm it's the here. second to last day of Hispanic Heritage Month. Let him get a win because he's gonna get squashed by mm -hmm. Gunther. <laughs> he is. He is. Uh Katie, spit or swallow. Um I I'm gonna swallow the kingdom showing up at the end of Rampage. Now I have my reasons. Uh, a, Maria, who has yeah. done nothing but great things since or post WWE. Yeah. Uh, First Lady of Ring of Honor, her and Mike Bennett. And then, like, they came back to WWE, but like, we forget about that. We don't talk about that. But her and her husband, Mike Bennett, Matt Taven, the fourth other original member, Adam Cole, which, when he comes back, I need it because. Robert Fish Sr. is gone. Kyle O'Reilly had neck surgery. And who knows when he's coming back. Dirt sheets are saying whatever the fuck they want about Adam Cole. And until I hear something from Adam Cole's mouth, I'm not believing a goddamn thing Uncle Dave says. Um, but this could be a way to give Adam Cole the faction he needed. Because we had UE for like a month and a half. Two months. So reuniting yeah. him with the kingdom would be smart. And it doesn't and that, look like <laughs> Roddy's coming back, coming to AEW. And, no, soon. with all the fucking Days of Our Lives bullshit on NXT. <laughs> yes, Matt. Do you think we're going to do the whole, like, uh, cuck thing between Maria and Mike again, like we did in WWE, where... Mm, probably not. No? Oh, okay. I See, I... I will be honest with you, uh, FTR and Sean Spears match started, and I turned Rampage off, so That's I fair. missed the ending. That's okay. Um, but but I, I like the sound of that. Me too. Um, I have no idea who Taven is. Uh, Matt Taven's good. Do know Bennett, and yes. I do know Maria, and I love Maria. Maria's a fellow... Not Chicago, and she's way out there, but Illinois. from Illinois, from from nearby. I lived out kind of near her, so nice. love to see her. Uh, I got a Playboy of her laying around here somewhere, so always good to see her back on TV. <laughs> but like more factions that actually do stuff and are good because they're done with Impact; their contracts expired. Yeah, so, and Maria they basically was like, want. "This company is off of our backs," and someone tweeted at her. Being like, oh, well, she's not talking about AEW. She's talking about Ring of Honor. She's like, no, no, no. I mean, AEW. So, shit. <laughs> I'm very excited. I mean, Shots talk your shit. Talk your shit, girl. Please. I'm just excited. Because Adam Cole's coming back soon. That's that's my hope. That's my dream. I, I need it. <laughs> I miss okay. him so much. <laughs> uh, Vicente, spit or swallow. Vicente. There's no N. Vicente. I'm sorry. Vicente. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, gonna go with uh, a swallow for NXT finally getting rid of the color vomit aesthetic that they oh. had for so many months and going back to the gold. They're back in gold. I love it. It's not black and gold. It's just gold and white or gold or whatever. But I'm glad to see it. I'm just glad aesthetically wise, especially since the last two weeks they had like the new logo, but it still had the color vomit around it, and it just it it, it grinded my gears. It was a pet peeve. So yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and just swallow NXT going back in cold. You know, I'm with you on that. Um, though the title changes, we still need that because you still got the rainbows and the titles and all that, the bright neon inlay. But uh, we're headed in the right direction, and I'm excited to see how all of this plays out and where we end up. Uh, along with that, because I'm also on NXT too, I am going to swallow uh, Kiana James, her assistant Jean, and that Brazer or Brazzers ass preview uh, that we got as she laid out her plan 
to buy Chase U's land and develop it. And then we got to see her versus Thea Hale because, A, we love everything Chase U and Thea here on the Smack and Raw podcast, but also uh, definitely gave me Brazzers porn star vibes in an office setting, which I also really appreciate. Not the it. office. NXT but... giving me a little bit of everything I need uh, on a consistent basis. <laughs> But like I'm, I'm spinning the fact that Thea Hill lost because Robert Stone's a piece of shit. Ooh. I agree. Don't give her. A, a, she hasn't won on NXT yet, and she's, she's so get strong. There. She'll she's, get there. She's, she's yeah. She's in her dues, like she'll yeah. yeah. If it makes you feel any better, Sasha. Sasha Banks, I think, lost her first three or four NXT matches on TV before yeah. she, before turning into the boss, and then even Bailey went on a giant losing streak before she even got her first win. So she could still be this big this baby face. Yeah. It's just she's you know, she there's growing pains, you know, she's gonna take some L's, you know. She's yeah, also I, like I think 12, so she's got plenty of time. I was just gonna like say no. twelve. She's a child. Like she's, nineteen. She has her whole career ahead. Nineteen like, is still I'm, technically a child I was in my say, books. I'm thirty five. If you're nineteen, you're twelve to me. Like <laughs> I'm an old ass man at this point, all right? <laughs> She is closer to my daughter's age than she is mine. Let's put it that way. That is a lot, but Thanks. I guess to me. <laughs> All right. Queen PR, thank you so much for joining us this oh, evening. It is having me. always a pleasure. I, I love having everyone on from the East Coast because I know you really love doing my show and care about me to stay up this late because not everyone is night owls like we are so the fact that you were able to stay up till midnight join us and do all this with us means the world to me and i always love having you on oh of course you guys are literally family you all know that um i hope well i know hopefully you guys can come to our event in next month on uh, a couple weeks in brooklyn um to celebrate our fourth anniversary event so that would be amazing and then if not then we just got to plan on when we're gonna meet yeah, we're gonna have yeah. to plan because yeah. i actually Katie and Jizzy just recently came to Chicago and got to meet all of us. I saw. I had major FOMO, by the way. I was like, mm-hmm. "You weren't the only one." Am I not there? But whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That's a we, we will definitely do that. Um, and yeah, that was one of the big reasons we wanted to have you on was to celebrate a little early with you the those wrestling girls four year anniversary tell everyone where they can find those wrestling girls what you guys got going on outside of this big bash and tell them more a little bit more about that too yeah um you can find those wrestling girls on youtube um we just passed the 1000 subscriber milestone which has been a goal of ours from like day one so that was awesome thank you everyone who helped us get there our way yeah oh yeah hit that subscribe button like right fucking now like if you're watching um and um yeah we have new episodes coming very soon um we have a lot of other announcements that we can't really share yet um but just stay tuned follow us on twitter and join our facebook discussion group follow us on instagram um and purchase a ticket to our event um it's gonna be at house of gold event space in brooklyn there'll be a panel um powered by black girl magic so we'll have janelle from jobber tears um we'll have candace cordelia from pwi and sirius radio and i guess this is a smack in it raw exclusive our third panelist oh or maybe i mentioned it yesterday but i want to i want to announce it here because i love this podcast um that spice spiegel from uh black girl magic is going to be on the panel and it's moderated by krista b um so it's going to be a good time it's going to be a good time um if you can't make it sponsors and tickets we're still looking for event sponsors so it should be a great time yeah hell yeah yeah all right well again thank you so much for joining us uh we are going to miss you as we continue the show so if you guys are still here don't worry even though she's gone you're going to get more of me and unfortunately vince um and some katie too so Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, Bye, Queen. I love her. Uh, So, Katie. uh, Yeah, no, I love her so much. I'm so glad. Like, it's so awesome, the three shows that we've done. And because, like, I always have problems. And we've talked about this. Like, talking, going into a woman's DMs and being like, hey, would you like to come on Pornhub? 
because yes. like but <laughs> them being so cool and coming out and doing this and getting into the gimmick of it and you and down for the count and jj and all of the women and people that we've worked for that are just like yeah let's go have some fun and do this like i appreciate the shit out of it like i said everyone from the east coast who stays up late and comes out and either watches us or does it it's fucking awesome so uh Closed. est katie cst cst no uh, cst wrong shut up um <laughs> you're the only one that says that you know what well whatever uh i'm going to i think jj mentioned it too i'm gonna gargle orange cassidy winning the atlantic title now uh listen the match with pack fantastic that man sells a ddt better than anyone i've ever seen in my entire life looks like he dies every single time and like i love orange cassidy like the wherever from like what like whatever it it works but like what's i just want to know like what's going to be the plan for this like i no go ahead finish i'm sorry i was gonna say i think you could have taken this opportunity to put the all Atlantic title on like Ethan page, like give it to someone who doesn't have a lot of TV time, but could use it. So that's where I think the plan is, is the all Atlantic title isn't meant to be. I thought it was, and that's what I wanted it to be, but it's not meant to be an IC or a European title. This is a title no. that is meant to be traveled out on the Indies and yeah. used and defended and all of that. So it's not about getting TV time. So the fact that, A, they've put a belt on Orange Cassidy, his first one in AEW, which I'm excited about. Mm -hmm. Two, the fact that they got it off Pac so he can focus on doing the trios thing. And then mm -hmm. three, now Orange Cassidy gets to go out and do his gimmick and have fun and do shit. Uh, all across the Atlantic. All across the Atlantic. And, you know, build those relationships with partners so Mox has places to go wrestle outside of AEW New Japan. <laughs> Uh, I'm all for it. Like, I don't think putting that belt on Ethan Page would have done anything for him. Ethan Page needs to get that TNT title because that's mm -hmm. the one that, or or one of the many Ring of Honor titles they now have, because that's yeah. something that they'd be able to put on TV and utilize. That's not really what the plan was with the All Atlantic title in the first place. But match was a banger. I'm swallowing that. I mean, yeah, like, like I have no Dan issue Housen, with, uh, yeah, like Pac. Dan Housen showing up. Uh, Pac still trying to use the hammer. Like I said, the match was great. I have no issue with the match. I just like, and I love that this was Cassidy's first title in AEW because, like, best friends could have been or had the opportunity to be like the first trios title holders. But then all that bullshit happened with the elite. But, like, I don't know. I will swallow the fact that Chris Statlander came out after that it, it, they went off air. And yeah. I had to see the shit on Twitter, but like, she's definitely not cleared yet because like, she had the full leg brace and she was limping and <laughs> Tegan knocked. <laughs> but like, she did get Tegan knocked. She did get Tegan knocked. Terrible. But like, I don't know. I just too, there's just too many titles now. <laughs> I just don't know. Did, did it leave a Did it leave a funny taste in your mouth? Yeah. I hate when that happens. Don't you just hate when that happens? I do. <laughs> uh, speaking of funny tastes, Vince, spit or swallow? <laughs> I'm sick and tired of you. <laughs> <laughs> They're funny. <laughs> uh, I have like three more spits slash swallows left. Uh, quickly, LA Knight. Yeah. He's back yeah. at his debut against uh the sultan of suave so there's three sultans out there now um so yeah he he got his his win it was it was a solid showcase match he got on the mic to showcase his real skill which is his promo ability so yeah swallowing la night yeah yes and no because this la night promo is like the first ones he did in nxt which did not work for me this promo did not work for me like, don't get me wrong. I'm all for Heal LA Knight. I am, because Heal LA Knight is fantastic. I grew to love him in NXT. Heel. I don't think it's Heal LA Knight. I mean, he came out and basically told the crowd to go fuck themselves. He doesn't need them. That's... Wow. I missed that's that part heel. of Vegas. 
That's the, the whole promo started with, I don't need you people. Oh, I thought he was referencing uh, Maximum Male Models. No, he was talking about the crowd. He was pointing at uh, the crowd. Uh, so this promo just didn't do it for me for some reason. I, I'm listening to it. I wanted to like it. And well, it felt like his early NXT stuff, which didn't do But he'll get there. He's gotten there. He'll get there. So I'm well, excited. Like I said, I have the the luxury of watching his work in Impact as Eli and Drake. And I liked it. I liked all his work in NXT. I liked every single thing he did from the jump. Um, obviously, it didn't resonate with with uh, with you, Matt, but it was a, it was good with me because, like I said, I liked early NXT LA Night, so it was still good for me. So it still gets to swallow. There's a lot of there's a lot of gimmicks and characters, especially in like the last version of NXT, like right before 2.0, that it took mm-hmm. a while to grow on me, but they did. Like we've talked about Andre Chase. We talked about LA I like Andre Chase there's... from the jump too. Yeah. See those gimmicks had to grow on me so but they do and i'm excited for what la Knight's gonna do he's, yeah. he's got a huge future yeah um i am going to uh, uh swallow blade and anafe getting a big win and a title shot on nxt and them actually finally doing something with these guys because as much as i love the thirst stuff over mandy rose and toxic attraction uh actually seeing these guys get a win and a big win and getting tag team title shots and them actually pushing these guys because they're both talented as fuck big swallow hell yes i skipped the match um anything with brooks and jensen i just i don't fucking listen i it was brutal as fuck but uh, no i saw highlights i saw the clothesline that brooks and or jensen hit and brooks no Briggs, it's Briggs and Jensen. Brooks, it's Brooks, Brooks and Jensen and is his name. It's Brooks and Dunn. <laughs> Dunn and Jensen. It's I call him Brooks and Jensen. Then that's what they're going to continue to be called. And since I can't distinguish them from one or the other, I call them Brooks and or Jensen. Whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah. No. Did think- you say something, Katie? Yeah. No. Uh, no. Just the fact that, like, I agree with you, Matt. The but- like either uh, Blade and Anafe won because now they have a chance to be tag teams, which I'd be about. So, fuck yeah, yeah, because yeah. I could give two shits about Pretty Deadly. So, yeah, they'll do it for me. Katie, spit or swallow. Um, I'm gonna swallow uh, an angry, pissed off Drew McIntyre. In the beginning, it was SmackDown. <laughs> um, I just... had to think about my way. Where the fuck was Drew McIntyre in the whole show? Oh, yeah, that's right. He attacked. Beginning of SmackDown, because the parking lots are the most dangerous part of WWE. Uh, parking lots got called up to the main roster <laughs> with fight pits and war games the, and little uh, the ending end credit, graphic the end credit things graphic in the corner. Things. Yeah. Uh, no, try to murder legitimately murder carrying cross and like i just love an angry pissed off drew it works i yeah. i don't necessarily want to see this feud continue but i'm about it i just have one question who did carry and cross and scarlet get into an accident with because drew came with like an entourage of security from the building so like yeah. <laughs> was was Scarlet blowing Carrying Cross on the way? Like, were they doing a little bit of roadhead on the way in and he just wasn't Maybe. paying attention and hit somebody and that person's like almost dead in their car, like knocked themselves out, and nobody cares. Like well, who was driving the truck? Well, we didn't see anyone in the truck because the front door was opened because Drew McIntyre tried to smash Carrying Cross's skull with it, and there was nobody in the driver or passenger seat. Did Thanos snap and that person just fucking disappeared? And that's honestly that probably. I like I like to believe, and I already know you guys are gonna go ahead and shoot it down. But in my own head, in my reality, it was Ray Mysterio that are you the way went you ahead. Are. Ray Mysterio crashed into Scarlet 
and Karrion Cross pretended like he wanted to quit so that Triple H would be like, no, 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 Ray, don't quit. What if I give you a title shot? And he goes and takes Karrion's spot in the main what? event, gets That's the really number common. one contendership. <laughs> Ray Mysterio did it. That's my theory. And- Say what? <laughs> You just want to hit a sound bite every single time. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Uh, yeah, no, it was not Rey Mysterio. Though, uh, he was as absent in that car as he has been in Dominic's life, so I will give him that. Oh, um, well, too real? <laughs> <laughs> uh, as a father. Um, yeah, no, I, I enjoyed watching Drew, like, legit seemingly beat the dog shit out of carrying cross and i was like oh my god are we gonna do like not an aw car door thing where they hold the person's hand there and then they don't move it in time like are we gonna smash someone and it's gonna look cool we're not gonna fuck this up but we didn't they pulled drew away but uh yeah no angry sexy drew smashing men uh i'm all for it drew smash have we come up with a title outside of uh, because i still love the picture that vince picked and I'm a man, damn it, which is going to be my next swallow. So we'll get there, but uh, because I think those two, the t- the I'm a man, damn it, and that picture fits so well together. I understand. Uh, yeah, no, I don't know. I don't know if there are any other contenders for titles. To be honest with you. Okay, uh, Vince, spit or swallow. Uh, I got two, but I can honestly just end it with this one. Liv Morgan going off and going crazy on Sonya Deville, just going bananas off the wall. I loved it. I don't know where the fuck they're going with it, but I like to. I I love to see it. So, just like you guys were enjoying an aggressive, pissed off Drew, I was enjoying an aggressive, pissed off Liv Morgan. Now we were talking in a group chat, and someone noticed somebody on Twitter had posted something about Bray Wyatt's symbol being in the background of that. And I zoomed in. I thought they were talking like there was a something on a case you could really not see. But if you pay attention in the background, there was like the glow of the lantern mm-hmm. in the back. And I don't know if that was like an accident, like they were getting ready for Bray and they were testing it out and accidentally got caught on camera or if it was an Easter egg. Uh, but no, crazy, sexy Liv Morgan, who has a pain kink now, who just wants to get choked and her, like pain causes her pleasure like she's fucking turning into a cenobite from hellraiser all for it all for it give me pinhead live bro i'm about it that'd be crazy that's what the cameo we should have got i'd open that box (laughs) same yeah i mean where's the leak ma'am Liv being pissed the fact that she doesn't have her title anymore, which, like, Ronda's your champ. Where the fuck was Ronda? Um, uh, you should do that for free, Jesus. And also, <laughs> where the fuck have you been? Yeah. The fuck? You're in Chicago, and the fact that you're not somehow the third host of this show right now, well, Vince is laid out. And receiving a hot Carl from you as we do the show is very disappointing. Jesus! <sighs> I don't know what I was saying. <laughs> no, Jesus came in and kind of like derailed the conversation of where it was going. Oh, Crazy yeah, Jesus went to a concert there. today. Yeah. Big swallow. Um, like I said, uh, I'm swallowing the hangman promo with Mox. Uh, Mox has been giving hangman shit and all of these things that they've been doing. Um, but calling him a boy and hangman being like, is that what you think of me? You think, you think I'm a boy and Mox is like, yeah, I do. I think, I think you're a boy. You used to be a man, but now you're a boy. And then him going off and then just be like, I'm a man. Damn it. Like. I enjoy the shit out of it. Um, even the little bit that we got tonight where Mox and Claudio kind of did a did not as good back and forth promo. And I don't know if that's on Claudio or Mox or just the execution, but having to have Hangman sit back there and watch and react, um, all of that I enjoyed. Uh, Vince, we'll go one more round. Um, after This will be the last round, so you can do your last swallow. 
because right. I've still got some other stuff. I mean, I've got a bunch of other stuff, but none of it's super, super important. So, anything else on Hangman Mox? No, no. I mean, him much... punching himself in the head to bleed, bleed. Uh, definitely not what I was expecting to happen during that promo, but okay. Fuck, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, Hangman went a little crazy, and I'm curious to see where the... Uh, he even brought up how he's an anxious millennial cowboy, essentially. Yeah. So, Katie, spit or swallow? Um, My my biggest swallow of the week. Axiom versus Nathan Frazier was one of the best matches I have seen on TV this week. That match was incredible. I don't know That's... why you're making that face at me. I love, I love that match. I, it's the two of them have great chemistry together. Like the fact that this was the third match, you could tell. Like they ramped it up as much as they could. And Nathan Frazier's gonna be in the ladder match, which makes me excited because that is legitimately a baby Seth Rollins. And yeah. I we love Seth. We love Seth. So I literally loved that match so much. So much shit happened. One of the most fast-paced matches I've seen in a really long time. That like it made sense and their story throughout the match work. I liked it. I don't know why you didn't like it. It's not that I didn't like it. This is one of those cases where a good match for good match sake does not do it for me because outside of them having a good match, I do not have any investment whatsoever in Nathan Frazier or Axiom, which for the way I enjoy my wrestling and how I do things kind of brought them like it, it they did great things. It, it, it was a good match, but I, mm -hmm. there was a lot of NXT for whatever reason. Maybe I was just in a fucking mood that day. I don't know. Cause I think that was a day I, I texted you guys and I was like, I don't know. Maybe I'm feeling like a little, not like I need to stop podcasting, but like I'm feeling a little burned out. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe I was just, maybe, you know, it was just one of those fucking days. There was not a lot of NXT I really enjoyed. No, there wasn't a lot of NXT this week, but I'm going to, that is Katie Ashley just finessed my final swallow because I was going to swallow the Axiom versus Nathan Frazier match because it slapped. Uh, you're not invested in Nathan Frazier nor Axiom, but for whatever reason, I like Axiom. I don't know. Like, I have maybe it's the entrance, how like over the top and unnecessary it is, but I like it. Uh, Nathan Frazier, ever since he changed up his gear, I'm more invested in him. I think he looks even better. The match is fantastic. It was great. The purpose was that it was a two out of three falls or rounds match or whatever the fuck it was called. And the winner got to get the last spot in the ladder match for the North American title. And I kind of hope Nathan Frazier wins because I love Nathan Frazier. So I'm with Katie on this one. I'm swallowing that. That was my final swallow. And we can just pivot at you if you want because I got nothing else. How much more do you? Well, here. Here's what I'll do. I'm going to run down whatever I have left in my notes. Okay. And then I'll go to Katie and Katie can touch on whatever in that or anything that she doesn't have. And then we'll close out the show. So okay. uh, I'm spitting Wesley getting a win over Stax. And Matt just saving him from a well deserved ass whooping from Trick Mellow. Oh my god, the general hospital ass segment that Diamond Mine had <laughs> with fucking uh Roderick Strong in the wheelchair. And I'm spitting Braun Breaker using a spear because, as I've said repeatedly, too many fucking people are using a spear. And Braun used the spear to win his match. And I'm tired of seeing people using spears, it's overused. We stop winning matches with this fucking spear, Bron. I'd rather have you do the Steiner recliner or the Frankensteiner or something than a goddamn spear. I'm spitting Matt Hardy and Private Party everything because I don't need them back together. Private Party had a huge ceiling, and for whatever reason, we're gonna put them back together. And we're gonna do the heart like fuck the Hardy Party. Nobody needs to see the Hardy Party. Nobody wants it. <laughs> That's what killed Private Party. I'm swallowing Daddy Ass losing to Swerve and everything acclaimed in Daddy Ass. Uh, yeah, oh, I forgot yeah, that I had that mixed in with my DX stuff because mm -hmm. the daddy ass references, and I was just going to pivot all that together, but I forgot. I'm swallowing MJF and Stokely and their issues growing, 
and I'm swallowing Storm and Sheeta versus Hater and Brick because that match fucking slapped. And that's one thing in the women's division AEW has been doing very, very well is these tag matches with multiple women delivering on Dynamite. I'm swallowing also the fucking baddies because that was the whole reason I turned into Rampage was for the baddies and Jade Cargill. And I got satisfied by Layla Gray and Kira Hogan. Uh, so I'm swallowing that. Uh, we talked about Ray being a terrible father and running away. So, uh, and then we talked about Liv beating Sonya's ass for talking shit. Uh, so, yes, that is everything I had left on my list are a lot of spits and one swallow. Or two swallows. A lot of NXT spits there too. So, dude, that's... NXT did not do it for me this week. I'm like, if we spit, it, if we were spitting and swallowing shows, NXT would get a spit for me this week. It really would. It's understandable. Speaking of which, I don't think I think it's been a few weeks now where we haven't g- given our overall best show of the week. We're gonna do it this week. I'm uh, I got that planned. Okay. <laughs> We've been, we we ran long on time uh, the last couple weeks. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Katie. Anything else in there you want to highlight or anything else you got on your list I didn't talk about? Uh, yeah. Um, swallowing Jar- Johnny Gargano getting a win over Austin Theory because Austin Theory sucks. Um, swallowing Chad Gable being a fantastic human being and everything he does. Um, swallowing Sonya Deville on NXT and kind of reuniting with Mandy slash Doxic Attraction. I'm about it. I'm excited. Um... And I'm swallowing for the the brief interaction that Dark Order had with Sue Grayson, who came back because they were in Canada, and that was a nice little moment. It, I don't think he's like back back, but like they just had a backstage thing, and he was there because they're in Canada. I'm spitting the Dark Order. I know you no. are. I will say your new love affair with Chad Gable is one of my favorite things. He's like, fantastic. <laughs> Katie falling in love with Chad Gable uh is one of my favorite things that has come out of doing shows with you every week i mean can you blame me i picture you guys like together the same height you guys would make a cute couple like i'm all for i'm shipping katie and chad (laughs) how tall is chad gable somebody look it up five three oh my god i'm five three (laughs) i guessed i honestly (laughs) didn't know i almost said five four and i just i went down i'm gonna look look it up i need to know how tall he is real quick don't move on Uh, i need to know well, while he's doing that, or while she's doing that, Vince, what was your favorite show this week? Raw. It felt like a Raw after WrestleMania kind of vibe with the whole recap of everything that happened on Extreme Rules, the, the DX stuff, the unexpected return of both Gallus Anderson and Big Booty Brock, Brock Lesnar. Every, everything. I, I, li- I liked everything. It was all good. Raw gets the, gets the show of the week for me. Katie? Um... How tall is he? He's 5'8", apparently. Oh, so it'd be like... My height. Yeah. Matt's height. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So you height. met us, so now you, can en- now you can envision Chad Gable being as tall as us over you. That's I mean, where you'd stand. Never mind. I'm not getting into a conversation right now about this. Um, is it, is Where's the leak, ma'am? Oh. Am I picking my show of the week? Yes, you are picking your show of the week. Um, I think I'm also gonna go raw. DX, baby. Nice little, nice little reunion. Seth won title. That boy Brock and Big Bob. I'm with you guys, however, SmackDown has put banger after banger on two weeks in a row. So seeing as Raw will win best show of the week as per the Smack and Raw podcast, and I'm getting outvoted. I'm going to give kudos to SmackDown and make SmackDown my favorite show this week. I mean, it was definitely between the two. Yes. Like, that's for And me. fucking, like, as much as I want to praise Seth Rollins, Bray was on motherfucking SmackDown <laughs> and cut a promo. So that that is my show of the week. Yeah. I mean, it. both. Can yes. I pick both? Can we I'm, have I'm both? Still, I'm still hard from SmackDown. I think that's a problem. It's been a few hours. Smackdown was different just because of the ending. Like Bray Wyatt, the moment where he's like, I I lost my job, I lost myself, you know, I lost two of my closest friends or whatever. It it just it hit different. It just it hit different. But still, like in terms of 
show quality from start to finish. I'm still going to give it a raw. Fair enough. I pick that. Uh, Katie, can yes. you plug yourself for our viewers? Can you phrase that differently, please? No, I can't. Bitch. <clears throat> Uh, you can you follow just, me. Did you just call me a bitch? I did. <laughs> Say what? <laughs> I mean, it's okay. I called Dan Garcia a hoe. I'm just in a mood tonight, I guess. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at KatieRison13. Link to my bias. You got all things she Elite Showcase. Twitch.tv slash she Elite Showcase. Typically Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern. Unless something happens, youtube.com slash she Elite Showcase. I say watch the videos because they're way more entertaining. Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, if you'd like to listen. Um, she leads the weekly show that we do, Inside the Mind of, which a new one is dropping on Monday with Matt's lovely wife. It was so fun. I love her to pieces. I can't wait <laughs> for people to watch and listen. Um, in the crowd on hiatus uh savannah has new japan takeover and her show there's still no update on that i don't know we don't know what's going on uh but i've been on almost every person's show this week get joe i did young kings with reek i'm here we're doing getting off to tomorrow i like podcasting <laughs> i like podcasting i like totals it's the same as it's the same effect yeah <laughs> Uh, Vince, give it to me. Give me what I want. Katie with podcasting. She just wants a podcast. I give me another podcast. Uh, Vince, can you plug yourself for our viewers? Sure, I'll plug myself. Uh, for my for the viewers' pleasures, I can be found on Instagram and Twitter at SES Vince. Hit the link tree in my bio because it will take you to everything straight talk. Which, uh, if you don't want to go through all that trouble. Go to your favorite podcasting app and search up SES Vince and SES Vince's Straight Talk podcast should show up. We haven't done an episode in about a month, but we are recording our Chicago Bulls team preview tomorrow. And if everything goes well, it will go up in the evening tomorrow or Saturday in the evening on the 15th. Final day of Hispanic Heritage Month, by the way. And if not, it will be up on Monday. And following that, we will be doing power rankings and t- for the conferences, more basketball. So you f- basketball stuff, Lakers stuff, all that stuff. So go ahead and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Linktree, SES Vince. Just search me up. You can find all this stuff there. And as always, you can follow me at my reviews at MTTRIDDR on Twitter. Only also at Getting Off on Twitter, the number one horror podcast on Pornhub, which will drop tomorrow, 11 p.m. Central Time. We will be talking Halloween ends, as I said. Creation World Disney Banner, under which the Smack and Raw podcast exists, and you can follow them at creationworld.com, facebook.com slash group slash creation world, Twitter and Instagram at it's creation world, I T S C R E A T I A world. This Sunday, uh, the second to last episode of the season for hashtag them dragons. You can find me there covering hashtag them dragons with Travis and Mara. Also, Creation Comics is out. Uh, they just finished up She Hulk because She Hulk finished up. Uh, as well as the latest episode of Stargirl. So if you're into DC or Marvel stuff, go check out Travis and Mara doing Creatia Comics. And as Katie said, if you are curious at all what it takes to be a woman that can put up with my bullshit in a day-in, day-out basis and what kind of woman that is, go listen to Inside the Mind of with the Kate Ritter, my wife, Learn a little bit more about what kind of psychosis it takes to marry me and stay married and have a child with me. Um, it should be very entertaining and interesting. So Matt has no out. idea what we talked about. I don't. You don't know that there was a point where you guys were doing the show. I think it was before you recorded the podcast where I was standing in the doorway naked. What the fuck? I remember her looking over and like shaking her head. Yeah. <laughs> I needed something and I came downstairs and Why yeah, were you I naked? just got out because I just got out of the shower and I came downstairs <laughs> to get you didn't something. have a towel. No, I didn't. Is I dried myself off, I hung the towel up, and I walked into the basement. You weren't cold? No. Because that's my biggest concern. Because when I get out of the shower butt naked, I'm cold. So I always Listen, like, walk out with the towel. I have been married to my wife for five years. She has seen my penis in every way, shape, or form that she can. No, could. I know that cold, like... hot. No, that's, that's that's not the concern. hard soft. That's not my concern. Man. I, 
I understand is there that there's shrinkage after a cold shower or after they're like you're in a cold area. My concern is like for your own well being, man, you're gonna be cold butt naked in the basement. I know I live in the basement and sometimes I'm butt naked, so I put on the towel because I want to I don't want to be cold. She had just got done doing laundry, or I was doing laundry before we started, uh, and I had to go down to get some clothes, so that's why I went down there. Uh, I don't know. I still would have just like walked down with the towel, got in my clothes. So, the and then I would have to carry the towel back up and have it. No, no, I <laughs> well, you don't you don't do the thing where you like wrap your towel around your waist. I like walking around naked. It is what it is. It's if they small. burn Matt Riddle, you'll find all you find out about it. No, I get, I get. I get the excitement and titillation of walking around naked. It's just, I'm concerned for your health. For SES Vince and Kate, Miss Katie Kinsey Bay Bay, I am the patron saint of podcasting, the warden Matt Ritter. You have learned way too much about me. This is the number one wrestling podcast on Pornhub, the Smackin' Raw podcast. Later, y'all.